Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. I saw this really cool rustic vintage sign on an auction site. And since August 3rd was National Watermelon Day, I felt this was the perfect project for today. Let's get into it. I have this Dollar Tree wood circle. It's 10 inch diameter. I've drawn a line through the middle and I'll paint the bottom half white with ceram coat white acrylic paint. Today's the What Month is a Challenge, hosted by my friends Tammy of Happiness Created and Jackie of Crafting in Mimi's World, co-hosted this month by Tammy of The Rustic Willow and Michelle of Moxie DIY and Java. I love all of these ladies, and you will too. Each of us will make projects that relate to the current month, so that's why I'm making this watermelon sign. You'll find links to the co-host and the host channels, as well as the playlist in the description box. I paint the top half of my circle with Ceram Coat Tropic Bay Blue. So as you can see, my sign is going to be a full circle. I'm using the vintage sign as my inspiration. So now we'll go back in and I'll paint a portion of the white section with ceram coat watermelon, coincidentally, leaving a white border along the bottom. That'll be the rind. I'm only applying one coat of watermelon because I want some of the white to pe peek through and I want it to look worn. With Ceramco Parsley, I'll paint just along the very bottom edge, doing my best to keep it as straight as possible, but I won't make myself crazy. I just want a hint of that green at the bottom. With Ceramco Charcoal and the end of a paintbrush, I'll add the seeds. I just dot on the paint and I drag it a bit to add a point. They'll mostly be concentrated along the top. I'm keeping the space below clear for my lettering. Now I'll dry brush mostly my watermelon, but pretty much all over the sign with a bit of white to add to the aged look. I add stripes to the rind with Folk Art Thicket, which is a deep mossy color. It's really pretty. I've cut my stencils with my silhouette starting on the bottom here and what I'll do is I'll pounce over my lettering using my watermelon paint. You can use Mod Podge to do this too and if you've watched me before I'm sure you've seen me do that. Or you can use your base color like I'm doing here. This keeps your letters crisp and it keeps the paint from seeping beneath the letters, so, or the vinyl. So I'm using a cosmetic sponge to pounce on the color. While that dries, I'll add my top stencil, which says Farm Fresh Watermelon, and I'll pounce over that with Tropic Bay. Now that they're dry, I'll pants on the top colors, ceram coat white for the ice cold, 
and I'll peel the vinyl before it's fully dry. It's mostly dry. And then I'll weed out the vinyl bits. I pounce over the word watermelon with Ceramco parsley and I'm using Velvet Teal on the Farm Fresh. That's also a Ceramco color. And I peel and weed again. I add a drop shadow to the left of my letters with Ceramco charcoal. I use a small flat brush on the ice cold and a liner on the Farm Fresh Watermelon. And I add highlights to the right of my letters with white using my liner brush. With floating medium, I shade around the top of the sign with velvet teal. I prep my brush, working the floating medium into the bristles, and then I'll scoop up some paint onto the corner of my brush, stroking it on my plate to load the bristles, and stroke that color around the rim. Paint side of my brush is to the edge, and I'm reloading as needed. I shade across that dividing line also. The floating medium helps to feather the paint giving it a fade. Preparing my brush the same way, I'll shade around the red first with the Hippo Gray, then I'll shade around the perimeter too. Oops. I need a wee bit more floating medium there, but that gray splotch is okay. It'll add to the aged appearance, so I'll leave it. I like to build on my color, so I'm doing the hippo gray above the velvet teal. I'm not really going over it. I'm just kind of enhancing it. And I shade the divide again also. I give it a quick sanding to distress it even more and I'll wipe it clean. I did spray this with a clear matte sealer also. Now, I'll hot glue a few magnets to the back. I've made this to attach to a pizza pan project that I made last year. I'll link that below for you. Here's my pizza pan, and I'll pop this right on, and there we go. I change the signs on this pan seasonally. I love the way it turned out. This is a really great piece for the late summer. Perfect for the upcoming Labor Day holiday. I really like it. 
Hope you like it too. Thank you, Tammy, Jackie, Tammy, and Michelle for hosting and co-hosting. Their links are in the description box, along with the playlist and my list of supplies. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica. <laughs>